Hi, everybody. Welcome to another menopause.com podcast. Our special guest today is our friend Mark Fournier. He's a three time Emmy Award winning filmmaker. He's an author, he's a poet, he's an inventor, and he has a site called TheLimitlessCoach.com, which is a, a, basically it's a life coaching website. And it's not just any life coaching website. He's known around the world as an expert at getting your life together. So uh, welcome, Mark. Nice to have you here. Thank you, Larry. I, I'm Hi, Mark. having a great time. <laughs> Great. Well, today we're going to talk about, and this is, by the way, our third podcast with Mark. So uh, he's on a roll and so are we having him here. And today we're going to talk about the magic of moonshots, why everyone needs a moonshot and how you can create one for yourself. So what is a moonshot? Um, a moonshot is a daring mission that gives your life greater meaning and purpose in, in a single sentence. And I, and I want to emphasize the, 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 the idea of daring. So um, uh, hmm. ideally your moonshot will be something that's so outrageous that it seems absolutely impossible. Um, uh, the, the classic, in fact, it started by, it, it was started in, in the early sixties when uh, John F. Kennedy went on the air and said, and we will, land manned in this decade on the moon and bring him safely Ooh. home again. Uh, and, um, and so it was the shooting, we were shooting for the moon. And so that's where the term came from. And it was uh, uh, defined by the idea that it was impossible. We could not put a man on the moon and bring him safely home within that decade. And we were, I think, three years into the decade, if I'm not mistaken. We were so far behind the Russians and nobody could do this. The technology wasn't hadn't even been de developed um but we did it i still remember i don't know if you guys do i still remember oh, yeah. being out uh, uh playing on the beach in our cabin and and going oh they're landing on the moon now and i ran inside and nobody would come and i was just sitting there all by myself and watching on a black and white television yeah. man landing on the moon and it was like mesmerizing and it was inspiring oh yeah and uh, and so uh, what they discovered in retrospect was uh, when we shoot for more than we are, we become more than we are. Uh, when I was uh, running uh, track in school, I was one of my events, a field event was the long jump. If let's say I wanted to jump 21 feet, I wouldn't look at the 19 foot mark. I'd look at the 22 foot mark. I would always look beyond where I was jumping and my brain would be more likely to, uh, to put in that little extra. And, and so uh, by creating a moonshot, something that is spectacular, that is inspiring to yourself, that is maybe inspiring to others, that is just this, wouldn't that be something? Yeah, I know it's impossible, but wouldn't it be something? It sets, it, it opens the floodgates for all sorts of possibilities. Your subconscious doesn't sleep. Your brain, you know, awake and asleep, but your subconscious is just always ticking away always working out the problems and when you put that in it just keeps on looking at it and it and things happen for instance um the the, the phrase the uh, um uh the, in the secret the book the movie all right uh, the law of attraction i don't teach the law of attraction i actually know some of the folks who are in it and just said hmm, no number one they're thinking they're going to think they just put a poster of uh tiger wood on their wall and they're going to suddenly be you know uh, be shooting uh, under par but no, you have to actually do the work. But what's really happening, there is a phenomenon, but you're not drawing things to you from a, the other side of the universe. Um, uh, I mentioned in one of our other uh, interviews, uh, the artic the um, uh, articulate, the active reading system. <laughs> oh my God, it'll come back to me in a minute. Reticular. The reticular, thank you. The reticular yeah. activating system. <laughs> thank you. It's nice to have a, a pundit amongst us. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I got stuck in articulating something. I couldn't articulate the reticulating right. system. So it's just a simple thing our brain does. We're exposed to so much input on a daily basis that the brain starts to ignore things. It just says, this doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the things that are important. But uh, how does it know it's important? Well, you tell it that it's important. You say, 
I want this or that, or I'm interested in these things or whatever it might be. And then the subconscious starts to pay attention. And it's why if, you're, um, if, if your wife is pregnant, you go to, the, go to the mall, it'll be like every woman there is pregnant. What happened? Is this pregnant day? Uh, grow right. up, go tea. You'll go to the store. And every guy's got to go tea. So you didn't attract people with goatees and uh, pregnant bellies to you. They were there all along. I call it the law of awareness. You simply weren't aware of them, but they've been there. You just didn't have a use for them. And I can really validate, which by the way, this is one of the advantages of having a moonshot. It opens up your consciousness and you start looking for things you wouldn't normally look for. Right. Uh, so if and, I'm on a Bentley, all of a sudden, when I'm driving down the street, I see Bentleys all over. Everywhere. The place. Of course, I have to well, go to Beverly Hills to see it. I was it, just going to say, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I know where you live, Mike. And right, yeah. it doesn't hurt <laughs> if you buy but, yourself a Bentley and move but, to but the, but the Albuquerque. Moon, <laughs> but, the, you know, the moonshot, a personal moonshot, right? Yeah. Uh, creating that for yourself over 50. So give give us some examples of creating a moonshot. Sure. Uh, oh, I don't know if you've heard of There's this guy, um, Elon Musk. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, yeah. I drive I, his car. Yes. Of yeah, course you do. I, I drive one of his cars. Yeah. It says, and I'll bet you see Teslas everywhere you go. Well, that's because they're everywhere you go. <laughs> Especially if you're in Northern California, which is their... Uh, the, the greatest uh, grouping. Density, but, yeah. uh, right. but so Elon Musk is such a classic example. Uh, we've spoken before about how he has what I call an opportunity mindset. Um, he also has what I call a limitless mindset. And maybe we'll come back sometime and I'll ex get into detail on what a mindset actually is because it's, it's huge. A mindset is your whole life is run by essentially your habits and your mindsets. And that runs everything. But for the time being, we can think of a mindset as, as the lens that you look at uh, the world through, which is also defining your reality. And so a limitless mindset is being of the, the actual belief that anything is possible, period. I mean, not like a cliche, but like anything is possible. Anything the mind can conceive and believe, uh, the, the, mind, the mind can, or man can achieve. So um, if you've got that, it opens the doors to everything, to all of your dreams. So 50 plus, instead of saying, uh, you know, my, my world is over, uh, you, it's kind of like, well, what would Elon do? In fact, I do that in problem solving sessions. I go, well, what would Elon do? Uh, he definitely is an iconoclast. This man thinks out of the box. In fact, he does it uh, with, with passion. He, it defines him. He asks uh, questions everything. Well, why do you name people this? Well, why do you use that for this? Uh, why why can't you you know reuse a, a rocket and have it come back? So uh, in his case, his childhood fantasy of of uh, creating a or landing a man on the moon um, grew into a moonshot. I, I mean, a man on Mars grew into a moonshot. Uh, By the way, could, uh, yes. The weird thing is that. Um, Werner von Braun, you know, the, the Nazi scientist who was yeah. in the United States and got our, our yeah, space well. program going. Yeah. He actually wrote a book talking about going to Mars and how Mars would be colonized. And he, he wrote in the book that the character that would lead this uh, voyage to Mars, his name is Elon. No. This way. was back in the... 50s and 60s was yeah. this is it follow the was this the next chapter in the after the book of revelations uh, yeah i mean it's <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, it's amazing and 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 weird and kind of scary but uh i but, yeah, never knew that yeah that's just kind of a, a weird aside but you know a specific example of a moonshot is uh is right here at manopause.com because mike and i years ago decided that we wanted to make a television show. And so we didn't know anything about it. Uh, we didn't know where we were gonna get the money. We had the story. Perfect. And so we went out and found the people we needed to get it done. And we did it. We filmed a 30 minute presentation pilot. I loved it. Show that we wanted to make. Yeah. Our wives at first were totally skeptical. 
And then while we're filming, they're like totally into it as if it was their idea. Um, <laughs> Wearing headsets, listening to the director and saying, right. and, 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 and then really subsequent fun. to that, we started uh, the website because we thought, you know, there's not enough out there for men over 50. There's lots of websites for women yeah. who are going through menopause and all this kind of stuff, but there's really nothing. So again, knew nothing about it. Didn't know what it was going to look like, but we found the right people, brought them into our lives and helped us launch menopause.com. So not that we're anything special, but we just had the, this passion to do something like that. And rather than saying, God, I wish we just went ahead and did it for yeah. better or for worse. Yeah. You know, like for making the TV show, our mantra was worst case scenario. When we're 90 years old, we can watch it on TV and say, hey, I made that. Grandma right? did that. That was the worst case right. scenario. So those that that's a personal it's, example yes. of what, what you're talking about. And how did there. it make you feel? How Amazing. Did, it's yeah. You were dreaming it up and scheming and you were starting to For see years. the business. For Pardon? years. We, yes. You can imagine with Mike having been an actor, the need and desire to get back into that life yeah. Uh, and finally being able to do it. It's like, well, all it took was perseverance. That's yeah. all it took. Right, right. And you've already <laughs> learned that, it, and of course, perseverance is the single number one ingredient in success uh, because if you never give up, you'll eventually get there. And behind perseverance then comes commitment because commitment drives perseverance. Right. And underneath commitment is belief because we don't commit to things we don't believe in. Right. So someday we'll talk about the power of belief, but at some point you began to believe that it was possible. And that's when it takes on astronomical. Okay, so yesterday, Mark, if you recall, we were talking about uh, our younger days wanting to be producers, right? We were going to take over Hollywood and we're going to be producers. We had a that. card made, we had a special card made, Estrid Fournier, you know, productions or whatever it was. And... Um, and we made it into the biggest offices in Hollywood. The people whose names were on the side of the building and were sitting at the at the top of the building in the penthouse office with the, Chuck, with the Chuck Freezes of the world. And we were pitching and people were just eating it up. And then we couldn't afford to keep going because, oh, well, this will be about a year before you even get something. And, you know, my wife just... Yeah. Announced we're pregnant and you had to get back to Arizona. And it's like, wow, we had, it a was a fun ride, but we had a ride. We had a moonshot, right? We, yeah. We, and we did it's it. It's not we about, it. right. It's not about landing on the moon. It's about right. shooting for the moon. Right. It's, exactly. It's, exactly. The, it's that so, journey that, you know, cliche. Yep. And, uh, and in the fact, journey is often better than the destination. Usually. Right. Right. I mean, we for, were in for most of us. Right. We were in our late twenties when we did that, and here we are. Like Larry said, that moonshot of making our own TV show. Um, we did it when when we were in our sixties, right? Yeah. And wow, that's pretty cool. In now, fact, next, don't stop, right? There, don't yeah, sit yeah. on your laurels. Keep so, going. So, in fact, in your case, when when I'm coaching my clients, they invariably start to get to that moonshot. They're like wait a minute, I thought this was just a journey. What happens when I actually get there? Uh, I have a simple term, I call it add a zero. And they go, what do you mean by add a zero? Well, what would it look like? Now, whatever your goal was, add a zero. I, we want to get to a million viewers uh, or a hundred thousand. Well, well, now it's a million, a million. Now it's 10 million. Sometimes it's add two zeros and it changes the game and it changes the way you think. Uh, and, and like the perfect example, I'll see if I can do this in 30 seconds. There was uh, a gentleman um, was in the Guinness Book of World Records, Tommy, Tom Hopkins, uh, listed as the world's greatest salesman. And his, bottom line, he used to go out and like in his 20s, bang on doors, try to get listings. And he could get, you know, three, maybe four listings a week. And so he did this at a zero. How can I get 30 to 40 listings a week? And you can't do it by just working harder. He was already working six days a week. So your brain, instead of going, will just work harder. No. See, it's work harder, not smarter. No, work harder and smarter. And, or work smarter, not harder. I say, no, do both. So 
he got this clever idea because the only way he could increase it by to that extreme, he went to a developer who was building a neighborhood and said, so what's going on here? And he goes, oh, I'm building a bunch of houses. Who's lit? Well, do you, have you listed them yet? No, not yet. Well, I'd like to take the listing. And the guy goes, well, okay, I haven't given it to anybody. By the way, how many houses are here? Are you building? 400. <laughs> he goes from four listings a week to 400 in a day. So he added two zeros. Well, the next thing, of course, is now he becomes an expert at working just with developers and getting the listings of entire developments. And now he can list 400 homes a week by just finding a new developer. So moonshots cause our brains to think differently. And it, it, it helps us become more than what we are. And of course it expands our, our, our resources and so on. So it's, it's the journey is more exciting. Life is more exciting and we're more exciting. And so. Yeah. And I think, and I think circling back as we finish this to the original premise that, um, that that's probably the most important thing to make the final third of your life uh, worthwhile, exciting, worth living uh, is to is to set yourself a goal to have a moonshot, and it doesn't matter what it is, right? It doesn't matter if it it's just your needs passion to be, and it it's your dream. Fabulous, right? Right, inspiring in your Absolutely. own mind, right? Who knows Look, what it might be? It might be growing the most beautiful rose that's ever been seen. I mean, it could be anything as long as it's something that that inspires you to get up and get going and do it. Yeah, Shakespeare wrote. Make no small plans. They fail to stir the hearts of man. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. So, yeah, the idea of, of not just a goal, that's why I don't talk about, you know, I have one goal, goal getting versus goal setting. And, and I could teach all sorts of things on how to reach those goals. But this is a specific thing about setting something so huge that you're almost embarrassed to tell people about it. But you must, because that's what brings it into reality. You need to say, this is my mission. This is what I'm shooting for. And people at first might go, whoa, yeah, okay, good luck with that. And then you reverse engineer it. Yep. If I wanted to get there, what would I need to do? So when Elon Musk says, all right, I want to create, turn mankind into an interplanetary species. Well, what would I need to do? Well, first of all, we have to get to Mars before we get to other planets. And before we can get to Mars, we've got to make it affordable. So now we've got to create rockets that we can reuse. And he reverse engineered his way all the way back to the origins of SpaceX by starting with mm -hmm. an impossible task. Nobody was shooting for Mars. Space uh, 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 goals had been pretty well dried up, much less going to, to our, the moon or anything else. So it started with a crazy, beautiful idea. And that's something that I think we all deserve. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been great again, Mark. I love uh, this moonshot. Very, very inspirational. Yeah. And uh, again, the website is thelimitlesscoach.com. Go there and you can find so much more information, not just on Mark, but about all these different uh, concepts that he talks about and find out about his courses and, and books that he offers and that kind of thing. And of course, stay tuned because we're going to be having yet another podcast. Uh, there's going to be a series of these on all kinds of different topics. So thank you, Mark, for uh, sharing your wisdom with us. And uh, we'll see you soon. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I love all this. You guys are so much fun. I'm so <laughs> happy that this was your moonshot. And thanks for uh, leaving an extra seat on, your, uh, on the ride for me to hop in. Great. So, Great. All create right. a fabulous day, guys. Can't All wait right. for the next one. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you.